Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to say something about the World Justice Day for the 2023 on why it is important to improve the rule of law and advance the people-centered justice. My name is Martha Kome. I'm the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya and the President of the Supreme Court. The rule of law and advancing people-centered justice are absolutely critical for several reasons. For instance, for the Kenya country, which continues to evolve democratically and economically, the rule of law is the bedrock of peace and security. It is through the rule of law that we have honed the human rights and dignity of every individual. And that is the bedrock also of sustainable development and peace and prosperity because without the rule of law you cannot talk about justice. The socio-economic development of any nation is linked to the levels of the practice of the rule of law in any country. The opposite of lack of rule of law is of course anarchy. It is because of uh, the existence of the rule of law that a country attracts investments, both foreign and local. It is through the rule of law that businesses can thrive and people also can thrive in terms of their own empowerment by having a conducive environment where they can go to school, they can have health, and they, there can be creation of job opportunities. All this requires the existence of the rule of law. And when a country has a strong rule of law, that country can protect the rights of the people from property rights to personal rights to enforcement of contracts. And also, people can seek remedies when their rights are being violated because there is assurance of accountability and there is absence of impunity when there is rule of law. For democratic and accountable governance to thrive in any country, it must be predicated on the rule of law. It is only when the laws are applied uniformly and equally that democratic governance can thrive. It is also the rule of law that enables countries to hold those in public positions accountable. This also helps in curbing corruption in public service given where there is no rule of law. As I said, impunity thrives. Here in Kenya, we are implementing the social transformation through access to justice. And what that means is that every action we take in terms of the administration of justice, we ask ourselves how it impacts on the people. In other words, it's people-centered justice. And this uh, vision prioritizes the justice needs and the rights of people. We also ask ourselves whether we are empowering people to be able to access justice in terms of the distances that they, they cover, the use of technology, especially talking about the technological divide amongst our people, ensuring even those who cannot afford the hair time or the devices, they can access the technological services offered either in the court station or in other government agencies, like the government kiosk called Uduma Center. 
because of the spread of technology, people can access these services to file their cases in court. They can also access a virtual hearings from either their phone or from a, an assistant court station uh, room or from the government provided facility because we want to leave no one behind when we talk about people-centered justice system. We are talking about people owning the justice system and empowering them to seek redress, to seek protection, and to seek justice in what we also call, call multi-door uh, menu of justice. You can choose either to have the court annex mediation as a medium of settlement of your claim. You can choose the alternative justice system, which is available uh, to solve many problems that inflict our people, especially family problems, land dispute, and even commercial uh, disputes. This therefore allows active citizen participation in the justice system that ensures the voices of our people is heard. People also participate in the justice system through the court users committee avenues that are available in all the court stations. And at the apex level, we have the National Council on the Administration of Justice bringing all the actors together in a collaborative, dialogic manner to resolve all the ECAPs and all the challenges that are faced in the administration of justice. This is all geared towards getting the best interests of the people that we serve and also developing trust in the institutions that are in the justice sector, linking them with the people and getting the views of the people in a coordinated manner. The next question I'll be addressing in this auspicious occasion is how we, the Kenyan people, or how the Kenyan people are benefiting from the people-centered justice and the rule of law reforms. I want to share a report which was done on the Justice Needs Survey, which showed that it's only 10% of Kenyans with justice needs and legal problems are able to access formal justice system. 71% lover resolve their disputes through the informal justice mechanisms while a whole 19% of the people of Kenya with justice needs and legal problems do not seek redress from any of the forums. And to address this gap, this is why we have embraced the people-centered justice programming in the strategic vision of the judiciary. The people benefit immensely from people-centered justice and the rule of law reform because this leads to a just, secure, equitable, and a prosperous nation where people are empowered to know their rights and to know the avenues through which they can seek remedy or redress if their rights have been violated. And we do this in many ways. People-centered justice prioritizes accessibility of justice to all citizens, regardless of their socio-economic status, thus promoting the creation of a peaceful, inclusive society. We are mindful of the marginalized people. We are also mindful of the vulnerable groups in our society who seek justice. Because of these unique challenges faced by the vulnerable groups, especially women, children, persons with disability, 
This is why we put in place specialized courts such as the small claims courts where a matter that involves a claim of less than $10,000 is filed and determined within 60 days. We've also realized the special problem of dealing with the endemic problem of the sexual gender-based violence, especially where children are involved, children who are victims or who are witnesses, in these cases require to be handled with care. And therefore, we have decided these are specialized courts where the registry is trained on how to receive these matters and give them priority so that we do not re-traumatize the victims of sexual and gender-based violence. We also support the Pro Bono Legal Aid Services Scheme for the indigent and the vulnerable litigants. We have also uh, priority cards that are availed to enable the old persons, pregnant mothers, persons living with disabilities get pre priority treatment when they come to our courts. What this means is that when you are given the priority card, your case will be given priority in court. If you are filing documents, you will also be given priority because these are people who need to be Final, to have their matters finalized quickly so that they can find their way home early. With these uh, reforms, the rights of every individual are likely to be upheld. And this guarantees personal freedoms, protection from abuses because it sends a message that no abuser will go, will go scot free and ensures that every Kenyan is treated equally under the law. Indeed, Kenyans have witnessed a vibrant judiciary in the post-2010 era, and that has boldly enforced laws and vindicated the rights and freedoms of Kenyans. A transparent and predictable rule of law is absolutely essential for business, and economic uh, growth and also the development of the people themselves. Uh, People-centered justice often involves the communities, like I spoke about the court users committees, I talked about the alternative dispute resolution mechanisms, I talked about the court annex mediation, this involves the communities, empowering them to learn how to solve their own disputes in ways that are culturally relevant and meaningful to them. Moreover, we have to also be mindful of the diversity of our many ethnic groups and embrace a justice system that takes into account these cultural norms and values ensuring the legal process is not only uh, just adhering to the rule of law, but is also culturally sensitive. And we have championed the mainstreaming of alternative justice mechanisms, opened various suites in the court stations where people can go and sit in a condio atmosphere with the people known to them and known to the cultural sensitivities of the dispute that they are facing and speak about finding a solution which is their own. And when they enter these agreements, the courts adopt the agreements. Most of these processes are driven by the court users committees who have been trained on the constitutional principles and parameters that allow the matters that can be settled. We always 
emphasize that matters of criminal nature, especially violations of human rights, sexual based violence uh, uh, cases are not to be settled in any manner but through a court system. But there are so many other cases involving families, involving minor infractions of the law, especially somebody who has stolen uh, a petty thief uh, who has stolen a chicken, they don't have to be taken through the formal justice system. And this has strengthened the rule of law because it has built coherence in our communities and there is predictability. Uh, people know they must respect the law. We have also adopted a policy in the judiciary of ensuring that we resolve cases expeditiously. We deal with backlog of cases. We have seen the case clearance rate of the backlog going high, courts clearing the backlogs, and adhering to the policy of the social transformation through access to justice that no case should remain for trial for more than three years and one year on appeal. Through the performance measurements department, we are able to measure the performance of each and every judge, magistrate, cadre, and even judicial, uh, other judiciary staff, everybody must file a return for the day's work and say what they did for the day. This accountability goes a long way to assure Kenyans that the money they use for the judiciary is also accounted for by each officer showing what it is that they have done for the day, for the week, for the month, and for the year. The next question is the progress uh, we have made and what experiences we have to share with the world as regards people-centered initiatives that we are pursuing. And what I would like to share is the promotion of the Motodo approach to dispute resolution, alternative dispute resolution mechanisms, and I can say for the past one year since I spoke to this forum last, 4,690 matters were referred to mediation. In addition, 17 new mediation registries were established across the country. Apart from that, uh, we are also promoting the use of alternative justice system by providing mediation and AJS suites in stations uh, to augment the infrastructural and accommodation challenges for those who wish to have a place where they can sit in a traditional method to re resolve the disputes. And these alternative justice suites are now in Kajiando, in Samburu, Trukana and Mandela, not to talk about Nairobi. We have seen a number of land cases that have been pending in courts for long periods of time, being referred to these forums and agreements being sorted out. Number three is the establishment of the specialized uh, courts for the vulnerable groups tailor-made specifically to respond to the plight of uh, justice needs in the marginalized groups like sexual and gender-based violence that I have spoken to, and also the small claims courts, where in particular, as at September 21st, 2023, the small claims courts had resolved a total of 37,500 cases with a value of Kenya shillings 6.5 billion that has now been mopped and returned to the economy. The turnaround period of completing small claims court, which is 60 days, 
and the fact that we have registered and a turnaround average of 52 days within which period these cases are completed is a complete success and a game changer as far as to the issue of people-centered justice is concerned because the small claims courts is appealing to especially the small business people and people with the small claims. Also leveraging on technology, um, so far 10 counties across the country have embraced e-filing, in other words you do not have to go to court to file your documents, really reducing the time of travel and we started with the historically marginalized areas of this country through Kana, Madeira and Samburu and soon we are going to Garissa and Wajia and uh, other areas that have been forgotten. By April next year uh, we hope the entire country will now have the facility of filing their documents electronically. Uh, we have also rolled out a program we call Mahakama Popote Initiative, which means having courts everywhere because we realize that some courts have very many cases, others have very few cases. Now because of the use of technology, cases can be distributed evenly to all the magistrates, including those who are in far-flung areas uh, where cases are few. The other uh, strategy we have uh, employed in terms of ensuring accessibility to the court and limiting the distance is working out and mapping out the entire judiciary to make sure that in all the 47 counties of this country, there is a high court. We have established registries in all high court registries in all the 47 counties. And we are working towards establishing a magistrate's court in all the 290 constituencies. Uh, recently, we established a high court station in Mandera, Nyandarwa, Samburu, Siaya and Ramu. In addition, our mobile court services to the far flung marginalized areas remain operational to make sure that those people out there can also be reached with the justice system. It is also noteworthy that Kenya is among a minority countries whose rating in the 2022 World Justice Project Rule of Law in Index increased while ratings for majority of countries globally were on the decline. Kenya's overall rule of law in scorecard increased by 1% in the 2022 index and was ranked 15 out of 34 countries in sub-Saharan Africa. Kenya regional ranking in civil justice and criminal justice was 13th out of 34. The World Justice Project Rule of Law Index is a helpful tool for us to put more efforts to apply many, many strategies to advance people-centered justice and to ensure the rule of law is experienced by everybody. We have also taken some initiatives to inform policy through the use of data from the index that we have learned from the previous decisions. Uh, we are recognizant that resource allocation must be accompanied by data. We have identified areas of reform in terms of legislative reforms. We were able to gazette the sentencing policy. We have also been able to gazette uh, criminal reforms because our criminal laws have not been reformed for, since 1930. 
and other policy changes to enhance the rule of law and promote justice for our people. We continuously keep working under the National Council on the Administration of Justice in addressing the challenges that were highlighted by the Index on Limited Access to the Legal Representation. For instance, uh, we have looked at the framework to uh, assess and benchmark performance, which is an ongoing exercise. We have also looked at the international comparisons. Kenya can also use the index to compare ourselves and pick up the best practices and gain insights from other experiences from other nations. Overall, the rule of law index serves as a valuable tool for accessing, guiding, and advancing Kenya's efforts to promote people-centered justice. I thank you for giving me this opportunity.